Hello, it's Neil and I'm back for part two of building a beach buggy. Obviously this is part two in a series, so if it's the kind of thing you're interested in and you just stumbled across this video, skip back to part one, check that out, things will make a lot more sense hopefully. Before I continue, I've got to say the biggest thank you to everybody that's, that's not just watched part one, but liked the video, subscribed to the channel, shared it, sent me nice messages and things like that. I've had so many, I'm just, I'm blown away by the response we've had so far. Got best part of 2,000 views in under a week, um, over 200 subscribers straight off the bat for my first ever video. So that's just, that's blown me away. That's amazing. So thank you to every single one of you. Um, please keep doing what you're doing because it's clearly working. Um, it gives me so much more inclination to carry on doing these things because it's, yeah, it's a lot of work. It's like I say, I haven't done it before. It's a pretty steep learning curve. Um, I've learned a lot from part one, so hopefully the videos will you know, improve as the series goes on. Um, once again, I'll remind everyone that it's not a, a strict how-to video as such. I'm an amateur at this stuff. Um, there's dozens of different ways you can do these sorts of things. I'm basically just showing you the way that I'm doing it to, to document the build from start to finish so we can go from having a crusty old Volkswagen chassis to one day driving a sparkly, shiny, cool looking little beach buggy out of that door there. So that's what we're working towards. Um, if you wanna come with me on that journey, amazing. Really, really appreciate it. Now, where are we? Part two, what we're gonna to do today? We're gonna to start with some rust repair. So if you remember, the two front edges of the, of the chassis spine, they were pretty rotten, so they're gone. Gonna make some new ones, weld those in. Pretty exciting to actually start putting some metal back into this thing because all I've done so far is, is chop it all out. Um, but the bit I've been really looking forward to is cutting the, the spine in half by, you know, this much, shortening that gap, officially turning this into a, a short wheelbase chassis. So it's days as a Volkswagen Beetle are well and truly over and it can live out the rest of its life as a beach buggy. So here we go, part two. Let's do some rust repair. Now it's time to replace these, uh, these rotten sections across here. So I had my, my lovely friends at Guernsey Sheet Metal bend us up these uh, bits of two mil thick mild steel. So we've got 50, 50 mil that way, 17 mil that way to replicate this portion here. Now, I was hoping to get away with leaving these parts in because it's where the, the, the pedal assembly mounts and I could probably just about get away with it but it is very thin along there and it's for a bit of extra work to replace this section all the way along, drill these holes, weld in some captive nuts there. I think we're just going to zip this entire piece off and replicate that. So what I've done is scribed a line down the center of, of each of those bolt holes and uh, one down either side of this because it's sort of elongated, a bit sort of overlized. So what I'll do is I'll weld in these nuts into this piece before I weld it into the car. But these holes here, this line here is gonna run pretty much parallel with that. So if I drill this hole first and then try and weld it in, this bit here is gonna be a, a bit of a mess. So we'll put these holes in afterwards. I hope that makes sense. The only thing we've got to, got to bust out is this, this sort of central support here, which uh, locates the, the tube for the clutch cable and whatnot. So we'll just cut that down either side, cut these sections out, and then once these bits have been replaced, re-weld that to those. Make sense? I think it does. I want this line here to be as straight as possible so that, um, you know, I'll get a nice even gap when I butt this panel up to it, get a nice consistent weld. So the easiest way to do that, I find, is just clamp a, a sacrificial straight edge along there. And with a one mil cutting disc, you can just run it along there, chop that off, and it'll be as straight as possible. There we go, that's uh, that's one of them all fitted up. I've done the other one as well, but that's just one of them clamped in position there. So we've got a nice, nice tight gap all the way along. And that's why I did these scribe marks before, obviously. So 
Now I can just transfer that scribe mark onto here. So this one will be the center of the, the bolt, same that one there. And these ones are the outermost part of that, uh, that hole in the middle. So thinking a few steps ahead makes life a lot easier. So the next job is going to be to drill those holes, weld those nuts in, and then we can weld this all the way along here and then trim off the overhang on the end and do the same on the other side. That's the first one clamped in position. You'll see that I've uh, I've welded some some M10 nuts on the back side of here. Just just tacked it on on three sides. That's more than enough to hold it in there. That's just to replicate those those factory captive nuts. You've probably already figured out why those holes are there, but if you haven't, we'll we'll show you that later. Um, another thing I've done, I've gone around and cleaned off all the paint and all the surface rust and everything else on all the surfaces to be welded using these, I really like these for this, the old uh, stripper disc, I don't know who makes them, oh, that's a Draper one. They work really well for cleaning paint off without taking any of the actual metal away, because it's very easy to get a bit carried away when you're sanding this stuff, ends up wafer thin and then it's horrible to weld. So that's one of them clamped in, next job, tack it all in place and then finish weld it. Happy with that, can never have too many clamps. What I like to do when welding sheet metal together like this is get two clamps close to each other, really try and get that metal one piece as flush as you can with the other. So we'll tack that there, move a couple of clamps over there, tack that there and work our way along until we're, we're tacked every couple of inches or so. That'll stop things moving around when I finish weld it. Hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. So you see I've got clamp either side of where I'm going to put the tack keep it nice and flush. So I'll quick fire one in there and then move the clamp over. That's all it needs to hold that. So then that clamp can now go over that side. Flush that up there, get that super flush like that. There we go. Both sides all tacked up, ready to go. What I've done is I've put some clamps and sort of cable tied them together there and put a clamp there to stop these from sort of warping outwards as I put some heat into it because you've got to be careful with how much heat you put in because it will distort it, it will bend it. So the idea is to keep everything as in place as we can. Now to get the settings perfect on the welder, I used some of the knackered old sections that we've cut out and the off cuts of the new pieces that I put in. So you see there where I've welded that and sanded it out. The most important bit is that it looks like that on the back. See, we know that it's, it's penetrated all the way through to the other side. So we've got our settings just right there. So now the plan is if I run from one end to the other and steam it all up in one go, it's guaranteed to warp it because that'll be putting too much heat into it. So I've tacked it every two inches. So the plan is do between a couple of inches there, go over here somewhere and just space it out, give it a bit of time to cool and try to not put too much heat in there at any one time. So uh, gotta be patient, which is difficult because I love, I love welding. See, we've got some nice big fat slugs on there. They've penetrated through perfect to the other side. So we'll leave that to, to sort of chill out for a bit, turn it over, do some on the other side, keep alternating it, 
and I can go along, sand all those welds flush, and you'd never know that I'd been here. That's that all welded up in two inch stitches like that. See, they're not, they're not the prettiest welds in the world, but that's not what we're going for because we know they're getting sanded off anyway. What we're going for is getting a good even heat distribution and the weld to penetrate, yeah, all the way through to the other side, which is done perfectly. So now I've got the really tedious and filthy task of uh, sanding off the top of all of those. Now I find the best thing for that is these in a grinder. You'll get a lot of people that will jump straight to, to flap discs like that, which they are good for munching off a lot of material. The problem with them is you don't just sand off the, the high spot of the weld. They tend to sort of deform around the weld like that and you end up sanding the, the surrounding material, which is what we want to try to avoid. So, one of these, the back of a grinder, hard plastic backing plate like that. The other bonus with these is, look at that, 65p. I think it's cheap as chips. So even though you go through more of these, they do a better job and they're cheap as chips. Buy loads of them, they're great. I didn't bother filming the sanding because that's the boring bit. Watching it would be even more boring than doing it. But look at that. Can't be upset at that. You'd never know. Just got some holes to drill in there. And that's that bit of rust repair done. Beautiful. Now we're onto these, uh, these overlized holes here to get the pedals through. Already done that side. You might have already figured it out. Those holes are the centers of that, basically. So I go in with a hole saw, but the trick is take the drill bit out the center and turn it round so that this drill bit doesn't start eating into that hole in it and it sort of wanders all over the shop. So it locates into there. And the other trick with it is you've got to sort of, say you're doing this one, you lean out a little bit so that it just drills this side of the hole. See, there's the, the, the piece from the other side. So you just do a bit that side, bit that side, bit that side, and then just go in there with a the Dremel, clean it up, and you've got a perfect non-round hole. Easy peasy. Now it's time for the bit that I've been looking forward to the most. The chopping the thing into two pieces, closing that gap up and officially making this a short wheelbase car. Now what I've done, um, I'll angle the camera down so you can see what's going on a bit here. This is where the, the first cut line is gonna be. You might remember I was sort of doing a bit of head scratching, figuring out exactly where I was gonna shorten this thing. Uh, toyed with the idea of, Getting, getting rid of this section where the handbrake is and remaking a new handbrake bracket and all that business, that is what I'm gonna go for. So, the front cut line, it's gonna be here. So what I've carefully done is mark that with a, with a 90 degree angled square to keep it as straight as possible this way. Measure all the way back to my, you know, that line that I drew on the front ages ago that I'm referencing everything else to, to get this line as, as straight as possible. Now, after, after lots of, uh, measuring back and forth on the body shell itself. The measurement that I've landed on that I'm gonna shorten this thing by is that much, 360 mil, which in old money is about 14 and a quarter inches. That's gonna be the, the, ideal, the ideal measurement to, to trim things down by. Now, you might remember I spoke about this, this recessed section in the side of the tunnel here, and I was hoping I could do away with that. Um, it's actually going to come slightly into that on the back side, so I'm going to have a little bit of a little bit of a wiggle here to contend with, but that's not the end of the world. I can cut this line, cut this line, and then I can address this edge and uh, manipulate it in such a way that it mates up with the with the front portion as neatly as possible. So now I've um, gone over here with a sharpie, marked that line. I've got my nice 360 mil spacer there, so I can butt that up to here. Go along, mark it, mark it, mark it trim it all, cut it, measure twice, cut once. That's the idea. So let's do it.
all marked up. No going back now. This is where we're going to cut it. Put some uh, idiot lines there so that I don't cut it on the wrong side of the tape. I've made doubly sure that this is as square as possible to this so that, uh, yeah, makes life a bit easier. Like I say, don't measure twice and cut once, measure 10 times and cut once. So that's ready to go. Let's make some sparks. I'm excited. Brighter time. This should give you a better idea of uh, exactly what we've got to contend with now. So that's this section done away with. Save that for later. This bit. Slide that up to there. So you can see, just straighten that up a bit. You can see what gap I've got there to, to deal with. So you see this bit that sort of bends in there. That's what we're gonna have to heat this up, straighten it out, get it to meet this as good as we can. Obviously this top section is still going to be too narrow, so the plan will be a relief cut through here or through there, either open this out or close this in, and make that make that line up as, uh, as good as we can there before we weld it all up. At this point, it's, uh, it's worth noting that it's, it's easy to let things get away from you as far as keeping things straight and true. So what I've done is carefully marked a center line from measuring all the way over here, all the way over here, at every every available point down there. Then, good old bit of string. I know that that hole is perfectly central on the end there. That's where I've just knocked up this uh, this bit of wood with that center line marked in it there. Little slot cut in it like that. So then we just. that there, nice and tight. Then it's a case of, uh, you know, I can, I can wiggle this to, to get my alignment right. As long as that string intersects those center lines, we know we're straight. I could use a laser, but it's at work and I don't want to go and get it. And also the battery can't go flat on a piece of string. You might have noticed that I'm sliding these pieces along a nice big thick piece of steel there, which you might remember is to replace this flimsy old hunk of junk. What I've got there is a bit of four mil, four mil mild steel plate, again from the nice guys at Guernsey Sheet Metal, and then uh, bent into this, bent into this shape by uh, our mate Steve at Stainless Steel Fabrication, so cheers for that. That's gonna that's gonna beef things up nicely. It's you know more than twice as thick as uh, as what they come with from the factory, and just putting this little little shape in it there makes it even stronger still. So yeah, bit of extra beef in there to strengthen this thing up. So uh, in case we accidentally do any wheelies, we don't break anything. Hopefully. Now it's time to uh, massage this section here with the hammer. You see I've uh, propped it up on an anvil, clamped it in there. I've got it resting on my trestle there. I've got it tied to the ceiling there. It's not, not at all sketchy. It's fine. So we'll just uh, get the trusty map gas torch, nuke that for a bit, get it nice and warm. And then the plan is lay this piece of aluminium over the top, beat the snot out of it with a hammer, and then it'll end up flat. That's the idea. Let's do it.
Pretty good. A little bit of heat makes all the difference. That's both of those bashed out and uh, yeah, it's done the trick nicely. So we're, we're a lot closer there now that we've, we've lost those little recessed parts there. Now, after doing a fair amount of head scratching and figuring out the, you know, the fours and againsts of doing it certain ways, what I've settled on is, is a relief cut on either side. So as you see, we've got our center line mark there. Uh, just drilled a couple of holes at the end of where I want that relief cut to be. That's always a good idea when doing stuff like this because as you open this out, it stops the metal from, from trying to sort of tear or trying to crack at the end there. So what I'm going to do is just run the, run the cutting disc along there now up to these holes and then open this section out, open that section out. And if there's still a little bit more left to go, I think I'll probably just take a slither out the middle of this one here and close that up. But by going back to there, the shape of the tunnel back there is a lot closer to the shape that it is there. So we sort of lose this, this narrowed down part there and then we'll end up with a, a shape that flows into this sort of little raised hump here nicely and it'll leave us with a nice flat section on top where I can uh, do the new handbrake mounting. So yeah, that's working out pretty well. That's it, ready to be tacked in place. I've gone round and um, sanded off all the paint inside and out so we get a nice clean weld without any contamination. So the plan is, tack it on the bottoms there. Obviously we've got our string line running through our, our pen marks there so that we know everything's all straight. We'll tack it on the bottom and then gradually work our way up making sure that these two pieces of metal are as flush as possible all the way up and basically sneak up on this top portion here until we're all the way up this side, all the way up this side and I can get this part welded in and then we can get to work on filling up those, uh, filling up those gaps there. Let's do it. Now that we've got the thing tacked up so it can't go anywhere, turned it back over upside down. Got a piece of a uh, piece of three mil mild steel flat bar, three inches wide. I've been gradually beating it over the anvil, tweaking it in the vise, everything I can to to make it fit this profile here as good as I can. Uh, that's going to go on the inside. It's like a sort of reinforcement plate. Um, obviously, we've got these these bumps here you'll see on the inside so I need to take a few cuts out of there shape that make that so we can weld it in there that will beef it up nicely that's the plan more cutting more grinding more welding after plenty of cutting grinding beating welding everything else that's what we've ended up with you can see it's got a bit of shape to it that obviously fits up inside there, meets that shape nicely. And you'll notice the other thing I've done is drilled some holes all evenly spaced all the way around. The plan being, this goes up on the inside, clamped nice and tight to get it flat to, to this piece. And each one of these holes will get filled with weld. Call that a plug weld or a rosette weld if you're feeling posh. And then once that is all spot welded in place or plug welded in place around there I can then run a really nice big hot fat MIG weld all the way over that join and as that penetrates through to the other side that will also latch onto this part here it's probably overkill to be honest because we've got this super beefy plate going on the bottom but overkill isn't always a bad thing especially when you can 
disguise it, hide it on the inside. Nobody will even know it's there. By the time this is all sanded smooth, you'll never even see where it's been uh, where it's been shortened. That's the plan. And obviously we've got these these pie cuts here, which I can I can fill up, grind smooth, and we should be safe, strong, neat, and tidy. Before I go and put that piece in and weld it in, I'm going to give it a good few coats of this stuff, which is a zinc zinc based weld through primer. The idea being, obviously, once we put that plate in there, we've got two bare metal surfaces, which would be prone to corrosion. So the the zinc protects the protects the steel from rusting, but it's also it's sort of heat resistant and uh, still lets you weld through it. So the idea is. We'll give this a good few coats inside here. Um, same, same with our filler piece, we'll give that a few coats as well. Clamp it all in place, fire those welds through, and this will protect it, make it last longer. That's the idea. As you can see, we've got our plate clamped nice and tight to the back side there. So now it's time to just uh, plug weld up these little holes here. Try and get this so you can see what I'm doing. Ish. Just run out of wire. Oh no! Good job I've got some more. Anyway, there you can see what that's supposed to look like, and that's one there where I've run out of wire before I finished. Boo! Out with the old, in with the new. Let's do that again. There we go. And we should be able to see on the inside. Yeah, see where we got good heat penetration through there. We know we're good and strong. Lovely. I got a bit carried away yesterday and uh, finish welded everything, sanded it all smooth and uh, I was in a rush to go to the pub so I didn't film any of it but there you can see we're all uh, all sanded flush there so the next job work out where this handbrake hole is going to go well that seems like the right place to end part two of building a beach buggy with me um, we've got our rust repair done in the spine um, we've got our chassis shortened so we know what we're doing next that's going to be sorting out the handbrake bracket um, and all the internal handbrake cable tubes and all that business so that's what's going to happen in part three um, once again my instagram if you use instagram is neil of steel with underscores in between give us a follow on there if you're interested because they'll be sort of you know, mini updates and stories and stuff like that in between these these video uploads um, and a whole bunch of other nonsense as well. So if that's what you're into, check it out. Um, once again, just the biggest thanks to everybody that's watched the videos, liked, shared, subscribed, all that stuff. Please carry on with that stuff because I'm amazed at how much difference it's made. Um, it gives me so much more drive to carry on doing these things. Um, so yeah, we'll see you next time on part three of building a beach buggy. Now, get out in the garage and build something. Just like, just like this guy. Hey mate, say bye. See ya.